Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Second Act Actors. I'm your host, Dr. Janet McMorty. I was and still am a medical doctor simultaneously trying to pursue a career in acting. First off, apologies for my voice today. I have a bit of a sinus infection. It's not the COVID. I've been testing myself left, right, and center. But, you know, it's just the regular old cold that we get when the seasons change, especially up here in Canada. I haven't been sick since January 2020, so my body's kind of like, what in the blue blazes is going on? It's a bit of a whiny baby. Uh, uh, secondly, thank you to two new supporters of the show this week, Nadine and Clodine. Thank you so much for your financial contribution to this show. It is so, so, so appreciated. If anyone else is interested in contributing to this show, staying on the air and also staying bias-free and as ad-free as possible, head on over to my website, www.secondactactors.com, and there is a link there that says support the show. This is a passion project for me, but as people who put podcasts on the air know, it is not cheap to put podcasts on the air, so your contribution is very, very, very much appreciated. My guest this week is Will McKenzie. Now, y'all know I'm so fascinated by people who are first act actors, people who decided when they were very young that they wanted to be an actor, were supported by their parents, friends, family, everyone in their, you know, tribe, supported in that career decision, went to school for theater, and are now continuing to pursue acting. Will is one of those first act actors. He and his partner, Carrie Kwong, who was on an episode of this podcast, she is a second act actor, also have a coaching business. This is not an ad for their coaching business, but I do want to shout it out because I have used their coaching services because I believe in both of them and that they have great insight into the audition process. Plus, I booked when I coached with them. And so they are vetted. So head on over to at Carrie and Will is their Instagram. And you can learn all about them and their coaching business. They are both actors. They are both lovely. Yeah, I'll know Carrie is lovely if you've listened to her episode. Will is a fantastically interesting human being, again, with his whole first act actor wanting to do this for a long time and continuing to do this acting thing. He has incredible insight into, insight into mindset, as well as the importance of mentorship. He's a very gritty human being because you have to have a lot of grit to be a first act actor and continue with it. But he talks about how important it is to have a good mentor to get you through some of the tough times that we all know are naturally part of this acting business. Please enjoy Will McKenzie. <music> The bigger the fandom, the bigger the NDA. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, tell me your story. How did you get into this crazy career of acting? So, um, it's actually, it's funny because it, it was born out of, so in grade seven and eight, I, I played the trombone and I loved music. And I thought I was a really good trombone player. And then I get into grade nine and... Um, I completely and utterly was so lost like with music. They were so far ahead. And um, I ended up stopped going to music class, which is ironic because I like I love music, but I was having so much trouble in music. And then I realized I was like, why don't I just switch over to drama? And I switched over to drama and I just, I absolutely fell in love with it. I was like, why have I not been doing this like forever? And I remember the moment that I decided that I wanted to be an actor for the rest of my life. And it was, um, I had auditioned for the main school play um, in grade 10, I think it was. So this was the first year that I started doing drama, drama class. And I auditioned and didn't get in, but the drama teacher loved me. And he's like, I love your enthusiasm. I'm gonna find something for you to do. So I got to do um, the Sears Drama Festival, which is a huge drama festival that recently got um, axed because well Sears went under right um, but I think it got picked up by something else I can't I can't remember um, now but that's where I first 
got my introduction to to it. And I remember we were doing rehearsals and we had to come in for the infamous Q to Q, which is the longest day in theater. Anyone who, who's in theater knows the Q to Q is the longest day. It's basically, you're, you're just a prop. You're a pylon who has to move from Q to Q and, and they have to make sure that all the lighting is correct, right? So it's, it's a 12 hour day, right? And when you're in grade 10, coming into the theater on a Saturday for 12 hours could be a very tedious process. But I remember that I just, I, I was having a blast and the, the 12 hours went by extremely fast and I was like, yeah, I could do this forever. <laughs> and, and I decided that I, I was going to. So I went to school for theater. I went to the University of Guelph for theater and um, the rest is history. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So you are a real theater kid. Real theater kid, yeah. You're one of them. One of them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Were you were you encouraged by your parents to be in theater or were they like, "Oh no." I absolutely not was. Theater. Were I you got, awesome? I got so I got so lucky and I think that's part of it is like so my parents are both like my dad did the high school musical and he's got very fond memories of it, right? He never pursued it, but he always had that thing inside of him where he kind of took the safe route and didn't chase his dreams. He wanted to be a writer. Like he's got he's got boxes of screenplays, and I keep on trying to take them from him so we can work on something together. Um, but he's that kind of guy. My mom, she's like, we're a very sports driven, very hippie esque family. Like they both have stories up the wazoo that they're not afraid to tell anyone. And so I, I got really lucky in terms of um, my parents. They're very very supportive. They they would. Um, they speak to the high nines of me and, and my career and the choices that I've made. And um, so I'm really, really lucky and very grateful for, um, for that because it's, it's, created that, it's created that feeling of, of, of being, you know, having the confidence in myself and to, to, to sort of go out and do it, right? And I know that a lot of people aren't, aren't as lucky, but I, I was really lucky in that department. So mm -hmm. that's... Did you ever... Yeah. That, well, that's kind of what made it possible for me to do so early on they weren't like oh you know like you know don't you know have a backup or something like that right i, I sort of thought that to myself and that's why i wanted to go to university because i was like well i can take theater but i can also take a minor in in, in english right and and um be a teacher you know because that was always something that i wanted to do as well um which i am doing now on top of being an actor so um yeah, it all comes full circle. It's really, it's really interesting how how that works. Um, I always thought that you needed to to be a successful actor before you could talk, teach other ones, how, other people how to act. But that's just totally, it's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> or you go the flip opposite with that old ad adage of like those who cannot do teach. <laughs> well, that's the thing, right? I mean, that's that's so ingrained into us, and 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 those who can't teach teach gym. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. As somebody who has a kinesiology degree, uh, basically a gym degree, I take offense. No, I love that. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so yeah, I'm trying to. Di I'm I'm dispelling the myth of that because it's it's just it's not true. I had that belief in me for a long time, and then um, recently I said, well, about a about a year and a half ago, I said, you know what? No, I'm I, I've I've got a very unique way of teaching things, and 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 I love to help people, and that's truly what you need at the end of the day, right? So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about theater school. What's that like? So I went to, um, this is kind of like on, on the whole thing of me not wanting to, um, I, like, I, I was kind of dipping my toe in it in, in the sense that I didn't want to jump whole hog into um, like a program that I was going to audition for or whatnot. I was like, I was still very timid. So I, I decided to go to the University of Guelph because it wasn't, it wasn't a program that you needed to audition to get into. Um, and it had a very holistic approach to the whole theater world. So in, in university, I got, to, I got to work on playwriting. I got to work on um, props and behind the scenes stuff, lighting. Um, so it was a very, like the whole approach that they have at the University of Guelph is um, you learn a little bit of everything. Even if you, you want to be an actor, you're interested in acting, um, to get a whole sense because, and it really helped me understand the, um, the machine of what performance is. Um, and I think it, it helped me to not be like one of those, I didn't want to be a stuck up actor. Um, or, or someone who was like 
so uh, narcissistic and, and, and kind of full of themselves because it's an industry where you may be the face of everything, but um, it's a machine where there's, there's so many people um, that are a part of the puzzle and so many people that contribute to you being seen in the right way and the story being tell, told in the way that it should be told. So that, that's what really um, attracted me to it. And I got to do tons of acting, obviously, because I was always putting my hat in the ring. Um, we had this, we had a musical, uh, a, a completely student-run musical company called Curtain Call at Guelph. And um, I, I did a musical every single year with them. Um, I did like the one act play festival every single year. So I was in, I was in between four and six plays um, every single year. Um, and, and, and I was like, I'm paying for my own school. I'm taking four courses and doing as many shows as I can. So I did five years at the University of Guelph. And honestly, like it's one of those schools where like you walk through the camp, it's not like UFT. Like a 60 at UFT is an 80 at Guelph. Like that's mm -hmm. the kind of thing. It's, 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 a, it's a total chill experience. Like, and, and especially in small classes with all the art, with all the theater classes. Um, you get to, you, you're on a first name basis with all your professors. They're all people that have worked in the industry, um, and so it was it was it was a wonderful experience. Like I, I loved my time at Guelph, uh, and it taught me a lot. Um, but I, it also taught me that there's a lot missing from from mm. the theater or from the educational world because they don't really like they don't teach you about um, producing you know they teach you all the skills and all the art and and that's that's a that's a lot of what the industry is about it's all like train 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 and training is 100% important i don't um, disregard that you you got to work on your craft but it misses a lot of a lot of things a lot of the real world problems that you run into a lot of the the mindset you know and and um, those things aren't talked about in uh, in university so yeah, um, but theater school was incredible. It, it's it's amazing. It's it was it was lots of fun. I networked with a lot of people. I made so many so many friends and in a community in a community that is small where you see a lot of the same people. Um, it, it it it's good to to know a lot of people. And and that's the thing. Like there's been a lot of really good actors that have done some pretty amazing things that have come out of Guelph. Um, which always amazed me because it was a school that required no no auditioning. So I, I really felt like I made the right choice there. Hmm. Yeah. What, when I've talked to people who've gone through theater school, they say very similar to what you just did. Like they prepare you so well for you as an individual kind of vessel for the art, right? Mm -hmm. Like you get to deep dive into like the great oh, like yeah. Chekhov's and the Shakespeare and all that stuff. Yeah. But exactly what you said, they don't prepare you for then now you're thrust into the world and all you've got on your plate is a silent on camera Taco Bell commercial and you're kind of like, oh, mm -hmm. this is now I feel degraded. But also the same with the business aspect of it. Exactly. And I think that seems to be a big reason for the atrophy of, of like, people just leaving our industry. Absolutely. So how did you learn that? So I think that there's, there's, a, there's an element of, there's, you know, I, I think the biggest thing for me is that, um, so I left theater and I had this mind about me that was like, I, I, I know to make money in this world, I'm going to have to move over to camera. So I became very obsessed. My first obsession from out of school was saying, okay, I got to take everything that I've learned and now I got to make it work for camera, you know, and start learning um, how to take what I, because I know, and that's the thing, like all directors, they love people who've done theater because you've got, you've got this massive, I've, I've got a massive range, right? And they can really play with me on a dial, but I needed to sort of learn how to, how to flex that dial, how to use you know, uh, how to use my range and how to understand kind of the art form in, in a different medium, right? Mm -hmm. Because like performance, you know, in like theater is larger than life, you know, and it's, and it's, um, it's big, you're acting to the back of the room, you know, and it's a representation, right? There's a lot of suspension of disbelief. But when you get in front of the camera, the camera doesn't lie. Like the camera looks into your soul. And, and, and so it becomes less about performance and more about being the person that you are and being comfortable with that person. So there's, there's this interesting shift that happens. And so that took me a lot of time. And, and I think one of the biggest things was I, I've worked with a lot of the, the big name studios in Toronto. 
And um, I always got the same feedback. You're a great actor, Will. You know, like you, 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 you really understand everything. And I'm like, okay, so then, then what's going on then? You know, like what, what's then what's the missing element that I'm missing? And it always felt like there was something missing to the whole to the whole puzzle. Um, because I'm like, okay, if I'm a good actor, then, then, then why aren't things just lining up, you know, like in another career, like I, I've taken all the right steps, right? I went to, I went to school, you know, I did, I've done all these things. And so it, it really comes down to now understanding that not only are you running a business, um, and, and that you have a brand, but that everything is happening in your mind. And that's when I got really I got very low and I had to go very low to sort of pick myself back up and realize that. And um, the biggest thing for me was getting a mentor and, 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 you know, utilizing the community and learning from people that have the careers and the, and the, and the life that you want. And so that was the biggest takeaway for me is that I, I, needed, I needed a big mindset shift and I needed to start looking at things differently because it wasn't talent and it wasn't it wasn't your knowledge of the world or, or, or how you could perform. It was, it was much more than that. You know, it's cause like you said, you know, how do you, how do you deal with now a, a silent on camera, you know, audition for Taco Bell? And the answer is, is it takes confidence to do less. Hmm. You got to do less. There's a lot less to do. There's not performing. They're looking for the human being. So you spend all this time in theater school learning how to perform and you get out of theater school and they're like okay now be yourself <laughs> and 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 that can be challenging when you've when you've you know spent so much time learning how to perform to the back of the room and you're like i want to use all this energy and then they're like yeah just be yourself <laughs> so that's that's essentially it was that the kind of low point that you like when did that happen if you don't need to go into it if you don't want to no i have i love it does to. seem like that was a big pivot for you yeah so the big elaborating yeah the big pivot for me was so once i had gotten out of school um i saw that the people that were kind of having the life that i wanted to have were the ones who who went and did another element of training after after their undergraduate degree. So they either went to film school or they went to, um, they did more theater training, right? And so I really got obsessed with um, credentials and like, you know, needing to have the right names on my resume and, and wanting to make those connections. I'm like, how do I make these connections so that I get the right auditions, right? Um, like, for instance, you know, I used to think, and this is complete bullshit, because I just did a, uh, I just did an audition, my first ever audition for the Stratford Festival, and I used to think that you needed, you needed to, you know, go to the National Theatre School of Canada to to get an audition for that, or you needed to know the right people, or you know, go to a more prestigious school um, to get those auditions that you wanted, and that just, it's just not true. Yeah. So I okay. So. Um, the low point, um, I think that, you know, when, when you get out of school and then, and then you're kind of, you're churning your wheels and you're, you're, you're going about, you're trying, you, you think you're doing all the right things, you know, um, and, and this is something that I admire about people that have chosen acting as, a, as something that they've done after they've done a career because, um, and this is interesting because it's one of the questions that, that you told me to prepare or to think about. And um, it's, I think it's the, the desperation because mm. I was so desperate to make it work because this is what I chose to do. So I was like, how am I going to make a living doing this? So I felt I showed up to every audition with this, with this desperation in my heart going, I need this to work. And guess what? The camera picks that up. They, it picks that desperation up and um, it does, it's, it's inauthentic because it doesn't, you know, human beings, when they're just going about their day, they're not desperate for, you know, for it to work. They're not trying to push anything, right? They're just being and they're just comfortable with themselves. And so, and that's the crazy thing about acting is that, you know, they, they always say, they're always like, train, 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 train. But I'm always, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm of the mind that it's like, it's, it's a marriage of both. You know, you want to be a full you want, okay, you need, you need the training because you need to understand how, how everything works, right? Um, but the training only really 
is beneficial when you're a fully formed human being who has this, you know, this comfort and this, this calm about them and they know who they are. And, um, and, and that's kind of interesting about, you know, someone like yourself, who's, you know, who's a, a freaking doctor, like, <laughs> you know, and, and so you've got this confidence and this air about yourself and there's not, there's not this desperation, um, circling around it because, you know, you're not thinking about how, you know, you're going to book this so that you can pay your bills, you know, and, and that, and that to me is the energy that sort of led me to, to a very, very low point. Um, and I finally just said, you know what, I need to find someone to work with and find a mentor. And, um, I really got deep on the mindset and how I was thinking on all these things. And, and I really shifted, shifted the way that I thought about things. And, things start to happen when you shift the way that you look at it. So did that internal realization, did it come just from you internally recognizing the need or were there like people or influences around you that said, knock, 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 will you need to make some changes here? Um, well, I, I think, I think there was, but it, it, it came from me mostly. And I think that it'll, it'll, it'll always end up, it's more powerful when it comes from yourself, I think. So it's kind of that whole thing that, you know, your parents and your friends, you know, that you've known for a long time can, can tell you things and, and it can permeate, but it doesn't like really sink in until you feel like you've made that discovery yourself. Um, so you kind of have to get to that low point and then be willing to dig yourself out of it. Um, and, and that truly is where the breakthroughs happen is when, is when you're discovering it and it's not someone telling you, you know, um, and I think that good teachers know that they know that, you know, the, the real long lasting lessons and breakthroughs are going to come from showing them the path and having them walk through the door themselves instead of, um, you know, being told it. But I still think that, you know, there was still, you know, like my mom would sit there and say, she'd say, I've been telling you, you know, but, um, you know, loved ones would tell you that. But um, it's it's just so much powerful when you, so much more powerful when you make the discovery yourself. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about, and about the teachers you've had, the mentors you've had, and also leading it into now what you're doing for teaching, because... I think as desperation sets in, as it does with anyone, even mm -hmm. you know, myself, kind of the further I get into acting, I, the more I notice I'm becoming more desperate. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, no, get back to the beginner mindset. Yeah. Anyways, but w I think we as actors are constantly searching for like our next guru and like maybe the next person who advertises that they have the way to booking or whatever on Instagram will be that person. And I think we can kind of go through like countless different people and, you know, we're like, maybe this one will be the next person. But as somebody who's so gritty, like you've stuck with something and someone for so long, like, tell me about the teachers you've had and tell me about your teaching going forward. It's a great question. I, I think I've been extremely blessed and I bring, and I bring this to the way that I help other actors and it's you know I've had a lot of really good teachers like my drama teacher if I have a theater show he still shows up to this day like oh, and, you know and it's like it's those kinds of mentors and those kinds of people that have made such a big impact you know it, it's the people who stick by you you know the ones who because it really doesn't it, it, it all comes down to a feeling all of us in life are all after a feeling um, and those feelings they live inside of you at all times and it's like the world and outer circumstances and everything can sort of sway you away from from those things that live inside you like you know joy is your birthright and you know everything in life kind of pushes you away from that and so i've had some incredible teachers like my english teacher she was she used to be a drama teacher when she was teaching grade 11 english and she let me do the um, the two beer not to be soliloquy for Marx in an English class, you know. So it's like those kinds of teachers who foster, you know. Um, and and it, and, it, and like I, I'm all I'm all about working with people's strengths, you know. And and that's what the best teachers did for me, and what my mentors have done with 
done for me is that um, it takes a delicate hand to push you in the right ways. Um, and it takes a kind heart to sort of um, take what people already do well, you know, and start from there. I'm, I'm of the mind, I'm all encouragement. I'm not, the, I'm not the kind of person, and that's the way that I've always worked. I work well with coaches that, that push me and know, and know when to push and know when to sort of, and, you know, um, get you to make that leap of faith. But it all starts from a place of support and comfort, in my opinion. Um, I don't think, I don't like that icky whole, you know, um, very elitist kind of um, making you feel bad or, or making you feel like you're, that you, you got to get to the next level. You know, it's like we start with what's strong about you and, and we start with, um, and that's what all of my coaches and teachers and mentors have done with me is they've they've really leaned into what's strong about me already and that that then you're learning from a place of confidence and you're learning from a place of um feeling like you're enough and and that's the currency of gold like that's 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 the way we get through the world you know living the best life that we can is is already knowing that we're enough and um and operating from that place of confidence because it's it's that is if there's any secret sauce to being authentic in front of the camera it's it's being yourself and being comfortable with yourself and and uh, knowing that knowing that you have something truly unique and special to share and and it's not about like just leaving that though, you know, and just saying, oh, I'm enough and then doing nothing, right? It's, it's saying that and going, oh, but I want to learn more. You know, I want to, I want to, I want to layer on more understanding of stories, more understanding of, of, of scripts and, 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 you know, and just stories in general and people, you know, that's, that's the best part of what we get to do as actors is we're constantly studying the human condition and just, learning what people do and, and, and what you do. And, and to me, that's just, it's, it's so rewarding. So that's, I would say that that is, um, that's the number one thing is, is starting from strength and, and believing in yourself and knowing that you're already enough and having mentors that they, they lead with love, you know, and they lead with, with support rather than anything else. And, and they believe in you. Do you notice, I know you mentioned kind of the desperation aspect of, you know, what we call like first act actors and second act actors. Anything else that you've noticed or differences, similarities between people who've gone through theater school and have always been actors and people who are now coming into this industry later on in life or later on in their career path? Yeah, it's, it's, this, it's this whole idea that they've already, like they've already had something that they've done and are successful at like there's this there's a there's there's this natural sense of detachment so i would say that you know there's there's the desperation element but there's also this like there's this natural healthy detachment from it um in the sense that it's like it's not needed you know so it still is connected to that desperation but but i would also further that and i would say that um there's this whole and i've this was a big one for me and and you know it's funny um because this kind of links back to how i've been blessed by my parents um being very supportive but it doesn't mean that they that some things that they've said haven't been kind of like they haven't been um we've had to i've had to unpack them myself and understand them i would say money is the biggest thing like mm -hmm. Because actors are, are obsessed with like being, you know, like they're always concerned with money, right? And someone who's had another career and like either worked in the corporate field or worked, you know, in the medical field, um, you know, they work really hard and they, and they get paid. And so it's like they're not really wor worried or connected to this whole idea of I need to book this so that I can pay my phone bill. You know what I mean? And so actors can get... There's this mentality of starving artists, which I think is probably one of the worst, the worst things that has ever been created. Those two words, starving artists, because, you know, like it, it really messes with your head, you know? Like there were months where I was, you know, uh, sacrificing so many other things, like in my, because I have to pay for classes and I'm like, well, I just can't eat this month, 
You know what I mean? And and it's like, so it really, those sayings and those things manifest. And my dad used to say that to me. He's like, you know, you're a starving artist. You can't afford to do that. You know? And he did, he wasn't saying it out of, out of, ma- like, it wasn't malicious. It was just like, that's what he thought, you know? And that's, that's what people think is you've got to be a starving artist. But I've turned that, I've flipped that script and I, I'm a thri- thriving artist now. And ever since I've, changed that dialogue in my head it's it's it manifests itself in in how you how you go about like acting is one of those things because i was a goaltender i played hockey hockey was my first love i wanted to be a goaltender in the nhl and um i i was a goalie and goalies are notoriously weird because yep (laughs) yeah because being a goaltender is like it's like playing a different sport within hockey like it's so massive it's wildly different than playing forward in in hockey and goaltenders and kickers yeah there you (laughs) go yes exactly (laughs) yes exactly um yeah so you know but what, what i learned in my sport world was that goaltending was less physically demanding than being a forward, um, but it was more mentally demanding um, because you're on the ice for the entire time. And so me and my dad used to have this saying, it's 85% mental and 15% physical. And it's interesting how in sport we call it like, oh, he performed great. And then I moved into a world of performance. Like there's a lot of like connection of performance in, in that sense. And acting is just like that as well. Acting is is like, it's, you know, 10% physical and 90% mental. I'd say it's even more, more so. It's all about the way that you hold your mind because you could be the most talented actor in the world, but if you don't think you are or you don't feel that way or you don't tell yourself these positive things, then you're not, you know, it's it, it's as simple as that. And, and, and I mean, it's a lot more complicated than that, but um, in a nutshell, that's what it's all about, right? Mm-hmm. Do you have any any practical tips or advice for kind of improving your mindset and getting from that starving artist mentality into the thriving artist mentality? Yeah, I do. And it's, um, find out why you act and never stop asking yourself why you act. So never close the conversation off because it's constantly changing. Um, and just always be willing to dig deeper and learn more, um, because that's the beauty of what we get to do. Is we're is we're we're perpetual learners, so we're always in the state of learning, and um, the high frequency. You lose the desperation when you're not, when the goal is not the next audition. The goal is the long term. Um, like I've always said. I don't need an I don't need an, an Oscar. I don't want an award. If there's one award that I want at the end of my career, it's the lifetime achievement. I just want to be. I just want to say that I've done this for my entire life and I've loved it, and and that that is enough for me. Um, so it's things like that, the the higher frequency vibrations that um, that aren't connected to money. They're not connected to fame. They're not connected to being the center of attention. Even though I was the class clown, and I and I very much was. Uh, obsessed with being the center of attention. It can be born out of that and it can be born out of imitation, but there, there, there comes a time where you have to start being realistic about it and, and really get to the truth of things because it's all about the truth. Um, the truth of yourself and being honest and being willing to being honest. Um, yeah. Do you have any crazy, fun, memorable onset stories? I do. Stage, I yeah, I have one. I have one that um, is my go-to like fun story, and and this kind of has to do with what I love about live performance. Like there's there, you know, I I would perform live for free for the rest of my life because I love it that much, and it's that connection that you have. It's that, um, it's that it's in the moment, and and you know something that you don't get when you're filming a Taco Bell commercial in your self tape studio is you don't get any feedback. There's no feedback from the, from the audience. You, you never even hear anything from the casting directors, which, but the thing is, is that in, in stage work, you get that feedback, that tactile feedback. And so my biggest um, thing is all, I always say that it's, it's ephemerality is my favorite thing about performing, which is 
when you're so in the moment that there's no room for any other thoughts in your head. And this story is, is a representation of that. So I was doing, um, I was in, can't remember which year of university, but I was doing a production of Hamlet, which I didn't get into. Um, I didn't get a role, but I was the eager beaver that really wanted to be a part of it. So I emailed um, the director, Judith Thompson. She's a big name in theater, in Canadian theater. She's a huge, huge, very successful playwright. Um, so I messaged her and I was like, you know, I loved auditioning for you. If you could give me any feedback, I'd love it. And I could, I'd love to be a part of the show in any capacity. And she's like, someone dropped out. So would you want to play Bernardo, which is the, which is the character who has the first line in the whole play. And so I started off with just, you know, I, like a role that had a couple lines. And I was just the guy who volunteered for everything. She's like, I need someone to hang themselves while the to be or not to be speech is going on. I'm like, I'll, I'll hang myself. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I was in the show and I'm the final scene. And, and the way that she had set it up was it, it was set in Tent City in the 80s, I think, in, in Toronto at, at the um, harbor front where a lot of homeless people and like hippies and stuff had set up like uh, set up tents and there was a tent city on, on the harbor front and so she set her production of Hamlet to be happening in, in Toronto tent city in the 80s um, very artsy right so theater right off the bat um, so I was playing a construction worker at the end of the sh of the play who was like looking to like demolish all the tents and like build stuff, right? So I had like my stud finder and I was like measuring the pool where Ophelia had, you know, drowned herself. Spoiler alert, anyone who hasn't seen Hamlet. <laughs> um, so I was measuring it and it was a very intimate small theater, right? Like a 200 seat theater. So right in front like the front row was literally right in front of the pool. And I had my measuring tape out and I was measuring the, uh, the pool, right? And I'm like, yeah, we can, we can destroy this. And then the most massive spider crawled out from, from the pool onto my hand. And one of the girls in the front row was so close that she could see it. And she screamed, right? Like screamed at the spider, right? And, and so I was midline and I had to stop. Like I stopped my line, right? I was like, oh, spider. And I killed the spider and then dumped it in the pool. And it was just one of these like visceral moments of just like pure living in the moment, you know? And just like that character was alive in that moment because I'd stopped reciting lines and I just killed a spider. And the, the couple people who saw it that got to share that moment, they laughed. Right, and then I continued my line, but it sticks out as just one of those moments in performance that is just so it means so much to me because I realized that, like it, it really is like that's when the magic happens is when is when you stop thinking and you start just being in the moment, and yeah, I, I that's that's my favorite story. <laughs> it's funny because I think of I can dig. Feel how that felt. You know, I've had a couple moments like that in my, you know, very bleh, nothing crazy theater Stop career. You're not, but Jen. I know. Yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> yes. Apologies. <laughs> you can tell I need to work with you, right? <laughs> um, but yeah, that feeling of like it's like in your gut, right? Where you're like, I am no longer me. I am now this human being, and this is how this human being would react. And I now have their skin on, and it just. God, it feels so good. It feels so like, good. Yes. It feels like you're, you're like success. Yeah, That's it really, really does. Cool. Terrifying because I, I hate spiders, but very Yes, cool. yes. I mean, my character didn't really hate spiders, but. Well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a good way to get over your fear of spiders. Be like, yes, well, your character, Bernardo, is not scared of spiders, so. <laughs> exactly. No, that's, that's, actually, that's actually really poignant. Um, <laughs> Very poignant. <laughs> so you've mentioned your parents a lot. Yes. Um, how do you think they, as well as other people in your life, your loved ones and stuff like that, how would they describe what you're doing for a living these days? Well, that's a good question. I think, um, uh, you know what, they would just, they would say it as it is. They would just say it as it is. He's an actor, like he, he's an actor and a teacher, um, you know. And 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 that that's kind of 
what I was getting at in the sense that my parents aren't, they're not, they're not like prestigious. They don't need like, you know, they, they, they just, they've always wanted me to be happy. And if I'm doing what makes me happy, then they're happy. So they're like, yeah, he's an actor and we're extremely proud of him. Here's a commercial he's done, you know, or go see him in a play. And, and, um, my mom and my dad are always, they're always so excited. Like when they see me act and when they see me do something, they're, they're just, they're, they're enthralled. And they're, they're those parents that will like brag about me and then, and, and are, you know, just extremely supportive. And so I'm just lucky in that sense, you know, so they would just say it as it is. That's awesome. Is there anything that you are looking forward to? coming up this year yeah I am I'm like I'm really excited probably by the time that this is released there will already be some movement but um, me and my partner who also has been on the show um, Carrie Kwong Carrie. she's <laughs> she's incredible um, we started a business together and um, we've got a lot of really cool plans like we we to continue the conversation that we've been having here is is we really want to start filling this filling the void that that is missing in the entertainment industry um there's a lot of toxicity and and i think that um that there is there is a healthy path to to doing what you love and and to being successful in this world of in this industry of acting um even in even in you know any kind of misbeliefs you have about the city that you're in like um here now in Toronto, Ontario, in any city that you are, um, is the best time to, to you know, invest in yourself and, and, and to be, to be an actor. And so I, I, I we're we're just excited because we've got a lot of things planned and and, um, yeah. Awesome. Any final words of wisdom? Uh, you are enough. <laughs> Thanks, Will. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, though, I think we never, we hear it all the time. It's on like every single poster in HomeSense, but we don't hear it enough because clearly it's not working, right? I think people are desensitized to it. Like, yeah. you know, I, I think that you still need, that you still need someone who actually believes it saying it to you, you know? Hmm. it's It's one thing to... It's one thing to read all, to read these things and to read motivational stuff, but it's another thing to have it being delivered by someone who really wants to see you succeed or really wants, who's really in your corner. Um, yeah, I think that, that that'll never go out of style. Believing in someone will never go out of style and, and being uh, honest and authentic um, will never go out of style. And that's what we, that's what we do as actors. Like, you know, I mean, we could go into a long discussion about, you know, what's going on in the acting world right now or what's going on, you know, you know, how things have evolved up until now. But, um, yeah, like I've changed a lot of the way that I've thought about acting because, you know, we've spent a lot of time revering people who who play these messed up roles. But, you know, I've come now to the place where I know that to get there, you got to go to deep places and have it still live somewhere within you you know there's still you can never get rid of yourself you know as good of an actor as you are um there's all it, because it's all like truth like the camera doesn't lie and and so it has to be from somewhere within you and you have to f be able to to tap into that you know Thank you everyone for tuning in and thank you Will for being my guest this week. Thank you for your insight, not just in this podcast episode, but in our conversations external to this podcast and in our coaching sessions. I really appreciate everything you have to say about acting, my career, and just coming at everything from a baseline level of positivity. I think that's really, really important. I hope you'll all tune in next week for another episode of Second Act Actors. Bye.